You are now entering Armbar Audio. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Armbar Audio. Today, we're doing a new style of show, which I am titling, titling, Six in 60. That is six topics of discussion, 10 minutes per topic for a total of one hour of wrestling commentary. I'm your host, Tim Farley. Next to me is my trusted companion, John Kearns. What's up, everybody? All right. Now, um, <laughs> let's be serious about this. This is Tim. I'm John. He grew so, a lot of hair. What are we talking about today? Well, the first topic on tonight's card is Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. So, obviously, we are going to be talking about the pure title tournament. Yes. The first round has ended. Jay Lethal defeated Dalton Castle. David Finley defeated Rocky Romero. Fred Yehide defeated Silas Young. Tracy Williams defeated Russ Taylor. Then... On block B, Jonathan Gresham defeated Wheeler Yuta. Matt Seidel defeated Delirious. Josh Woods, in a judge's decision, beat Kenny King. And PJ Black defeated Tony Deppin. This week on ROH, block A action is Lethal versus Finley to see who goes on to the next round. And Jonathan Gresham versus Matt Seidel. It should be noted that Jonathan Gresham and Jay Lethal are the ROH Tag Team Champions. Now, John, we got Lethal and Finley, Yehi and Williams on one side, and Gresham, Seidel, Woods, and Black on the other. Where do you see this going? So, let me look at that real quick. With Lethal and Finley, I'm looking for a victory from Lethal. Uh, Yehi and Williams, I'm looking for a victory from Yehi. Agreed on both fronts. Uh, Gresham and Seidel, I'm looking for a victory by Gresham. Yep. And Woods and Black, I'm looking for a victory from PJ Black. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, PJ Black is a wily veteran. He knows a lot of styles. But I feel like Josh, uh, I think his name is Josh Woods. Yeah, Josh Woods. Uh, He's a really bright star for ROH. And they're building him up really good. Yeah. Um, His match with Kenny King was very good. All the matches have been very good. If you're not watching ROH since it's been back, you're doing yourself a disservice. Right. Um... That's that's the only match that I can't pick a winner. But it really doesn't matter because I feel like Jonathan Gresham is going to win the B block. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say that. I think Jonathan Gresham is going to win the whole thing, personally. Who do you think wins the A block? The A you block. You said Lethal and Yehi, so yeah, who wins there? Lethal. So you think it's going to be the tag team champions? Yep. And the, the younger one's going to win? Yes. That's exactly what I think. I think it should be... I wouldn't mind that, but I think it would be awesome if it was Yehi versus Gresham. But it makes more sense with Lethal and putting Gresham over. So I'm going to have to agree with you. I think in the next month or so, the pure champ, the first pure champion since I think 2006 yeah. will be... The octopus Jonathan Gresham. And I wonder if it will cause a rift between himself and Jay Lethal. Honestly, I don't think so. Because uh, they seem to have this real mentor-prodigy type relationship. Or protege, not prodigy. That i really like to see. Um, Like I've said previously, Fred Yehi was unknown to me fully. And... He is amazing. Uh, Wheeler Yuta is amazing. They are going to be great assets for Ring of Honor moving forward. I love Tony Deppin, too. I love Tony Deppin. Um, but, yeah, as far as... Rust Williams was pretty good, too. 
as far or Russ Taylor, my bad. Yeah, they fought Taylor. Tracy Williams. Yeah. Um, and we all know how good Dalton Castle is. We all know how good Jay Lethal is. So, what do you think happens with the pure title after the tournament? Are they going to defend it like a regular title? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Probably just at pay-per-views. Uh, I don't know how you would go about figuring out a number one contender for that title. Right. Because, honestly, I didn't watch ROH back in the day. I mean, I went back and watched all of McGinnis and all of uh, Danielson and Punk and Joe right. and Low Key, but like I wasn't an avid watcher because, honestly, in 2006, I wasn't watching wrestling. Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see how they figure out a number one contender for this championship. Um, but, yeah, Jonathan Gresham... This is Armbar Audio's pick for the ROH Pure Tournament. Um, also, on this past week's episode of ROH, at the end, we saw a vignette for none other than Ethan Carter III, EC3. That's right, baby. Now, if you read spoilers for the... Um, for the tapings, it was said that EC3 was there, so I knew it was coming. And they might have said Moose. Now, Impact is saying at Bound for Glory, Moose and EC3 will be wrestling each other at an undisclosed location. Hmm. Could ROH be on Impact Wrestling's next pay-per-view, Bound for Glory? I think that would be really cool. And I think it's something that they've been trying to make happen for a while. Um, in what capacity do you think they could be there? What do you think? What, what are you thinking? Well, I imagine they just have the match there for the ROH with the ROH brand around them. Yeah. Um, and maybe like during the match, somebody from our two guys or three guys from ROH come out and say, you know, we don't like you taking over our, our space or whatever. Yeah. And it could cause like this impact versus ROH type of rivalry. Um, I don't know. You know, I, what I do you think John, I, I would be way into impact versus ring of honor. Uh, specifically, I would love to see like, Jay Lethal was a big part of Impact for a time in his life. Maybe we could even see Jay Lethal like leading the pack of Ring of Honor to try to take over Impact and try to reclaim what he once had. Mm. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, um, We could see Eric Young kind of be the gatekeeper for Impact as he's the current champion. Yeah. Um, and you still got some guys in Impact that have been there the whole time. Not many right now, but... Hernandez. Hernandez is there still. Um, um, we could see another TNA original re rebirth. You could even get Rhino in there. Rhino's there right now. Well, look at look look at Moose. He started in ROH and went to Impact. Yeah. And, and now he's trying... He, his whole thing was bringing back the TNA title, mm -hmm. and EC3 threw it off yeah, the bridge the river, yeah. and said, free moose. So, what if, instead of the idea of ROH versus Impact, they have the match at ROH, but Moose comes out to his old theme song and defects to ROH? That'd be something cool to see. He needs something. He needs something to do that doesn't involve the TNA title. Because, one, he doesn't have it anymore. And, two, it was kind of a miss to begin with. Mm. <laughs> the only reason it was a miss is because they couldn't get top TNA originals. And they got ECW talent involved. Right. Exactly. So... We still have a minute or so left on this subject, and we're done. So uh, we're going to go into the next subject. Into the next subject. <laughs> hey, it happens. This is what test runs are for. 
Retribution had a big presence on this past week's Raw. And a leader has been revealed. It's none other than Mustafa Ali. Yes. This started whenever the Hurt Business, who of course is still feuding with Apollo Crews and Ricochet, and now Mustafa Ali is involved. They said there's an opening in the Hurt Business tonight, and I believe Ricochet and Apollo Crews went against Lashley and Shelton, and then MVP wrestled Ali. Yep. And Ali said, I am going to beat MVP, and then after I will beat you, and then after I will beat you. Obviously talking to Bobby Lashley and Shelton Benjamin. During the match, however, Retribution showed up ringside, and Mustafa Ali put his backs against the Hurt Business and was ready to fight Retribution, went outside right to T-Bar's face, a.k.a. Dominic Dijakovic, who has That's a really Twitter. great Twitter uh, game. Yeah. He's been killing it on Twitter. But uh, got right in his face, and MVP saying, yeah, show him, beat their ass, blah, blah, blah. And Ali turns around, smirks, and a brawl ensues. At the end, Mustafa Ali was in the middle. He went like that. Yep. Now, speaking of Mustafa Ali, I'm kind of accidentally cosplaying Mustafa Ali right now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Mustafa Ali being the leader of Retribution? And what are your thoughts on Retribution as a whole? My thoughts on Retribution as a whole is that I expected more. Well, yeah, My because... Thoughts, yeah. It started on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. They were supposed to destroy everything. Then they got relegated to just Raw. Yeah. And I really thought that once Paul Heyman got involved with Roman Reigns, I thought that that was going to be where the leader of Retribution would be revealed. I thought it was going to be Roman. But I like having it be Mustafa Ali for this reason. If you remember not too long ago, SmackDown had a problem with their uh, broadcasts yeah. due to a hacker. The hacker was obviously in every way conceivable Mustafa Ali. <laughs> now, right. um, but it was never revealed and dropped. It, it was never re and dropped out of, seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, Retribution shows up and Whenever Retribution comes out, what happens? The lights flicker, the graphics get all screwed up, uh, the voices change and all that. And to me, it seems that this is either a continuation or a spiritual successor to Mustafa Ali's um, alleged, but obviously, hacker gimmick. <laughs> I think that... Now, on Monday... A lot of uh, wrestling fans voiced their their opinions, and a lot did not like the idea of Mustafa Ali being the leader because he's such he was a former cop. He has such a great outlook and wanting to change the world, as you can yeah. see on his yeah. Twitter. He's, he's very. very He's a very good person. And on TV, he, he was always very goody two-shoes. Right. But you got to separate that. Yeah. And on Mustafa Ali's Twitter, it said, they said why, we said why not. And there was a collage of pictures. Mia Yim was being looked at by a doctor. Dijakovic had Keith Lee standing over top of him. Somebody was making fun of Shane Thorne's height, I believe. That's what the picture was. Dio Madden was being at five through the commentary table. And right in the middle of it all was Mustafa Ali on top of the ladder touching the Money in the Bank briefcase. So, it makes complete sense. Yeah. Especially when you think about... When 205 Live mattered. Ali 
and Cedric Alexander were on pay-per-views. Yeah. Ali and Buddy Murphy were doing great things as well. Ali came over to SmackDown first and was doing pretty well. And then he just vanished. He wasn't injured. Mm -hmm. They just didn't care anymore. So I think exactly it. Ali, being the leader of Retribution, makes kinda makes me care about, about Retribution, Retribution that's, for the first yep. time. That's where I was headed. It's that's in its existence. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly where I was headed with that thought, Timothy. Now if only they could get rid of the gimmick and just be the wrestlers. I don't know, man. And like the fuck, the the masks, the masks are, are lame. The, the only the one, names are lame. The names are super lame. The only one who looks cool is Dio Madden. Dio yeah. Madden looks fucking hard with yeah. that getup, with the eyes and the mask. For I sure, like Dio Madden's look. Dajakovic looks too much like Bane. Yeah, I don't like it. And he looks so much like Bane that he sneaks in little references in his tweets sometimes. It's like he knows how dumb it is, and he's making fun of it. And the names are ridiculous. The T names are T Bar is a thong. When the yeah. thong shows, and uh, slapjack, I never slapjack. That's what you came up with for a gang member of an anarchist group, slapjack. That's that's the name. That's the name of like a of of like a C tier. Ninja Turtles villain. Like, that's... <laughs> right. <laughs> like, you're just above a foot soldier. Yeah. Um, and T-Bar... Everybody's bringing up this T-Bar thing. I never heard T-Bar. To me... The well, Eric Bischoff fired at him on Twitter with Urban Dictionary. Well, Eric Bischoff thing. is Eric Bischoff. And I've seen other people use that as well. That same screenshot. But to me, the thong showing has always been referred to as a whale tail. Right, yeah. That's what I've always heard. Right. I've never heard T-Bar in my life. Me either, until this <laughs> whole thing started. So yeah. thanks, Retribution. I know something from Urban Dictionary now. You taught me things that I had not previously known. <coughs> so, Retribution, Mustafa Oye being the leader is a good thing, in my opinion. And I think yours as well. Mm. Um, and it makes me care. It makes me think what is going to happen next. It makes me excited, at least for the promos. And uh, Dio Madden, Dajkovic, Walt, Mace, Tabor, Shane Thorne, Slapjack, Mr. Alpha Oli, they're all great in the ring as well. So it makes me excited to see their matches. And who would have thought that Shane Thorne was short? He always looked. Yeah. He always looked really tall. When but I compared first, to Dijakovic and Dio Madden, he looks like a baby. Yeah. When, 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 whenever they first showed up and people were saying, "Oh, it's Shane Thorne," I was like, Are you, "You're out of your mind." There's no way that's Shane Thorne, because on NXT he towered over almost everyone. Well, don't you know that NXT is just a bunch of vanilla midgets? Yeah, yeah, v vanilla midgets like Tommaso Ciampa, Keith Lee, Don Dijakovic. Cesar Benini, um, that, oh, F Fabian Eichner, Walter, yeah, all vanilla midgets. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so, yeah, it'll be, I'll be interested, I am interested in the retribution angle now. Uh, hopefully, Vince and Bruce do not ruin this and let Ali cut promos. Yeah. Even if they're just bullet pointed promos because we've seen on TV and social media how well he is at promos. Ali could be yeah, a those star. Weird, the, those weird like uh, like action movie type promos he used to cut where he was talking about being a cop on the streets and there were videos where it was him talking and he was like walking down the street in Chicago and shit. All really cool stuff. Yeah. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him go. I mean, they could make a lot of money off of a certain demographic if they do this right. Um, but yeah, Retribution seems to be going in a better yeah, better way. That's the final thought. And with one second left, 
Boom. That is Retribution. The Bullet Club is all but fine. Oh, boy. Uh, the G1 is heating up. Now, we're not going to be talking about any matches because that's coming later. We are going to talk about some backstage comments, though. Jay White recently had his match against Kota Ibushi. After that match in... What, was it the match with Kota Ibushi where he said the stuff about evil? I'm not sure. It doesn't really matter because we're going to talk, get into matches at a later date. So, evil wrestled Kenta. Yeah. Both Bullet Club members. At the beginning of the match... Kenta went... Kenta did this. Dick to go went like this. And Evil went like this. But the only people who touched were Dick and Evil. Evil Dick! Evil Dick touched! And... <laughs> and they left out Kenta. Of course, Evil being the bastard that he is, had to use Dick... In the match a couple of times. The match was actually really good. Yeah. Um, but, like, okay, whatever. I'm going <laughs> to talk about that later. Uh, like, later this month. Anyway, um, so, Jay White had some things to say about the way Evil treated his, his Bullet Club brethren. Yeah, now, specifically, what Jay White said was Evil... I saw that shit you pulled with Dick Togo. Let me say politely that that is not going to fly. And uh, it was a little more like that. Basically saying, oh, no. He talked about how he told him that he would be nowhere without Bullet Club. Uh, he beat Naito for the belts with Bullet, Club's, with Bullet Club's help. He won the New Japan Cup with Bullet Club's help. And... Uh, and then he, his only defense was against a junior heavyweight in which he won, and then he lost the belts back to Naito. Yeah. And if it wasn't for Bullet Club, there would really be no evil. Yeah. And that as a it, star. Yeah. And that if it wasn't for Gato, he wouldn't have Darkness Club in a Bullet Club style on his shirt. Right. So then, we had backstage comments from Evil. And... Evil said pretty plainly, uh, Jay, don't get it twisted. Um, don't assume everyone is behind you. And then later, Evil said again after another match, Jay, you seem to have a lot of trust in Yujiro. Right. This is really interesting stuff. We are headed, we are on the train full steam ahead headed towards a second Bullet Club Civil War, and I'm 100% here for it. Now, the speculation comes. Now, ever if you've been watching our show, I have been saying for months that the Gaijin need to kick the Japanese talent out of Bullet Club and bring it back to Bullet Club's roots. Then we did predictions for the G1, and John and I both said Jay White versus Evil in the end. That may happen, or it may not. Yeah. I could also see Tanahashi versus Ibushi. Um, because Tanahashi has just been so amazing and so pure of a man. It, it's un, unreal. Uh, but anyway... Me and John were talking... And yeah. I said, if there is others who are with evil, who would they be? And, John, your thoughts? So, it seems like evil is alluding to at least Yujiro. I could see Jado. Uh, obviously, Dick Togo. Um... I don't know if Kenta would go, but I'm thinking maybe El Phantasma would. And wouldn't it be something if we saw another betrayal by Gato? If he betrayed Jay and aligned himself with evil. That would be something. Now, if El Phantasma goes, Taiji would 
probably go as well. Yeah. What I said was the guys who were in Japan during the New Japan Cup should be with Evil because Jay and Kenta and G.O.D. were stuck elsewhere. Yeah, and Fale. Now, the thing with Gato and Jado. Gato and Jado have been tag team partners and, and friends for a very long time. I don't really see them splitting them up. Yeah. So, what I think would be really cool is if Gato wasn't the one to turn, but it was Jay. Jay. Let's say, yeah. in the ring, Evil, Jay are about to come to blows... Dick is ready to hit him with a chair or something. And Gato gets in the middle and tries to calm everything down and get them all on the same page. And Jay just hits a Blade Runner on Gato. That would be fucking sick. Yeah. And then as soon as that happened, we got the return of Fale, G.O.D. Kenta's obviously on Jay White's side because of yeah. how Evil treated him in the, in the, in the G1. And we just have a huge confrontation. That shit would be awesome. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, what else can I say? It would be awesome. <laughs> right. Um, Jay White is the best heel in wrestling, in my opinion. You don't have to agree. No, I might agree with you. It's just. When we say something like that, it's so hard. because It is hard. Because it's like, Roman's so good right now. Jericho's always up there. MJF is great. But think of how long Jay White's been New Japan's number one heel. Right. For a while. Ever since coming back from Excursion. Yeah. Um, well, ever since he turned on Chaos, really. Yeah. I think he'd be a phenomenal face. And if he goes against evil, he would kind of have to be faced by default because, man, do those crowds hate evil. And I hate them, too. Yeah. I mean, we don't hate them. You are it's like, you, you are yeah. big and powerful and strong, and you're using this old fuck to win your matches. Yeah. You almost lost to Yoshihashi. Yeah, that, that's a crime punishable by death. <laughs> a guy almost a guy who held both titles almost lost to Yoshihashi. Yeah, that that is true. A almost lost to Yano too, but to be fair, Yano is the king of pro wrestling. <laughs> um Yeah, man. So on Jay White's side, at least Kenta is the obvious one. And as far as everything else goes, like, G.O.D. would probably be with him. Um, Chase would probably be with him. Yeah. But, like, this goes back to what we were saying about the Gaijins need to make Bullet Club Bullet Club again, really. Right. And Taiji's a hard one to figure out because G.O.D. brought him in. Tama yeah. Tonga literally brought him in. So, um, I would consider it a big betrayal if he joined Evil. Yeah. But I could see it happening. But maybe that's what we need. Maybe we maybe we need a big shock like that. And if you consider El Phantasmo, he's British. So, would that break up him and Taiji? Or would he go with Taiji? Yeah. It's it, Of course, this is all fantasy and speculation. But, you know, uh, it's a good topic. It's a great topic. And as the G1 continues, more pieces of the story will fall into place. Absolutely. Because New Japan is very good at long-term booking. And the thing I'm thinking, John, mm -hmm. since they're already building this storyline in the backstage promos and such, right? Evil and Jay White aren't going to win. Uh, aren't going to be in the finals. Yeah, I'm leaning towards that way, too. I mean, mathematically, Jay White is at the top of his block right now. But Evil isn't. Naito and... I, I believe Naito and... Uh, oh, for fuck's sake. It's I Yono. can bring it up no, right now. It's Yono. Yono's up there. Somehow. 
Mm. Hmm. Let me see. Well, we have to move on anyway. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. So, final thoughts on the Bullet Club thing is that it's amazing. And because it's in New Japan. And in New Japan, most of what they do is amazing. Yep. We're moving on to Wednesday night. Two topics. Number one, NXT. No. No. no blah, 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 blah. Number one, AEW. So, AEW was the 30th anniversary for Chris Jericho's career. Um, the night was main evented by himself and Hager against the Chaos Project of Luther, who is a longtime friend of Chris Jericho and Serpentico. Uh, the match was not as bad as I expected it would be. Yeah, same. But throughout the show, we had video messages from various celebrities and wrestlers alike to uh, say good things about Chris Jericho. We saw Paul Stanley of KISS, Gene Simmons of KISS, um, Steel Panther, which were hilarious Steel because the one, awesome. guy, the one guy was like, wait, Jericho wrestles? <laughs> you know, like, he, he had no idea. Um, Kevin Smith? I fucking love Kevin Smith. He was on there. Also, side note, if um, if if you don't know, which I assume a lot of people don't, the New York the New York Comic Con is going on right now virtually, and Kevin and, ye and yesterday Kevin Smith and Chris Jericho had a movie trivia showdown that was wildly entertaining because it was Kevin Smith and Chris Jericho. It, it was fantastic. Find that. That's awesome. Find that. But uh, Lance Storm was on there. Uh, of course, his first tag team partner, who he broke into the business first with, match. and Don Callis, who is one of the runners of Impact Wrestling, which was but really surprising. Really to see. long time friend. Yeah, yeah. And then Ultimo Dragon, who is one of Jericho's best and earliest feuds, who is now in back in Dragon Gate, and then we saw the one man, the one, the Ace. The ace of the universe. One Hiroshi Tanahashi. With the New Japan Lion marketing logo behind him. Also, throughout the night, JR referenced Hiroshi Tanahashi when somebody delivered a dragon, uh, a dragon leg screw move. Um, John Moxley and Lance Archer both cut promos where they talked about their match in Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah! Um, yes! Yeah, uh, I think Excalibur mentioned New Japan Pro Wrestling by name multiple times. On Twitter, now, we're having Orange Cassidy ask, when is best of the Super Juniors? Um, Evil Uno tweeted, Evil Uno is wondering about World Tag Week. We had El Fantasmo uh, talk about how his latest workout session was absolute dynamite. So, the Forbidden Door, as our friend Andy Nemini on Twitter said, was literally an, a, an, an oak wooden door shaped like Harold May. Because he has stepped away, stepped down as president of New Japan, and immediately all this shit started. Right. And of course, this all could be them playing with us and getting us excited, but it would be awesome. But it's working, so keep it up. <laughs> to see it would be so awesome to see AEW talent in New Japan tournaments or some New Japan talent coming over for a little while for a feud or so. I mean, they don't have to be directly yeah, linked, but you know, sharing sharing talent here and there would be really awesome to see. Uh and it would and it would help both companies. And we know a lot of the contracts in Ring of Honor allow their talent to work no, in New Japan. No, AEW. Oh, why did I say Ring of Honor? I don't know. A lot of the talent contracts allow their guys to work New Japan. Miro is on a contract like that. John Moxley is. Chris Jericho is. Matt Hardy is. And Matt even Hardy's in Impact, on that contract. you got the Good Brothers who... Yeah, they're allowed to work New Japan. It's explicitly stated in the contracts. Yeah. So, I mean, that would be 
we got some shit going bringing on. Bringing the world together. Hopefully. Bringing the wrestling world together. Make it All happen. against the machine that is WWE. Uh, anyway, <laughs> speaking of a machine, um, Cody Rhodes wrestled Brody Lee in a dog collar match. How are you going to say speaking of a machine and you're not going to talk about Brian Cage? <laughs> Oh shit! I don't. It, I mean that. That's where I thought you were. You'll going. Underst- you'll understand. That's where I thought you were going, but then I thought we don't have anything to say about Brian Cage. No, we're I'm not- talking about yeah the so-called AEW machine, right? Yeah. People are trying to make this the narrative big- that's being pushed. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Cody won back the TNT title from Brody Lee in a awesome dog collar match, and then. He wanted to know they what they asked Cody in the ring, who, who's next, uh, because he wants to defend it on the anniversary show. Orange Cassidy comes out, does his thumb thing. Cody goes like this. So next week we're getting Cody defending the TNT title against Orange Cassidy. So of course people were saying, I don't like Cody being shoved down our throat, my throat. Why would they do that to Brody? Just because Cody left to do some TV, they gave it to Brody, and then they gave it back to Cody, and this doesn't make the Dark Order look good, or Brody Lee, and... These people don't know how a television title works, other people, first of all. Other people were saying, how are they going to keep Orange Cassidy strong against Cody? Uh, there's a whole lot of things being said about C- Cody, Can you especially please? bleeding. Okay, yeah. uh, I looked up... On Cage Match, all of Cody's matches in AEW. You got three minutes. And I will say this. Um, probably four of them he's bled in. So, that's bullshit. He doesn't always win. Uh, he's had major losses. He can't go after the, ma- the main title ever. Uh, and he did that solely for this purpose of the people wouldn't call him Kevin Nash. Right. Um, so, you're all full of shit. Unless you're not, whatever. Frankly. Uh, but you know what's going to happen? People need to have patience. And people need to think. How do you keep Orange Cassidy strong? How do you how do you make a great feud? Orange Cassidy, Cody Rhodes, great, great match. Interrupted by Brody Lee. Brody Lee, after the match, or, or during... The brawl, after the brawl or whatever, says, Cody, you might beat me in a dog collar match, but you can't beat me in a regular wrestling match. Cody loses the TNT title back to Brody Lee. Boom. There you go. You got a trilogy. And you got a feud that you could talk about. You got, and then you got what you can do with Cody after that. And I don't know how strong you have to keep a guy that has two clean wins over Chris Jericho. I mean, people throw around these terms. Buried. uh, Keep him strong. Like, you're not insiders. (laughs) You don't know. You you know a lot, but you don't know exactly how this shit works. Now, the final thing about AEW is the tournament to crown a number one contender has eight men in it. The final two will face each other at full gear. We know six of the participants. Kenny Omega, Ray Phoenix, Colt Cabana, um, hmm, Jungle Boy, somebody else. Who's the other person? Hmm. No, I ha- I have it in my notes. Do, do, do. You said Kenny. You said yeah. Oh, uh, Pentagon. I think no, not Pentagon. Wardlow. Wardlow. And it was announced Adam Page. Hangman Adam Page. Adam Page and Kenny Omega. Wonder if they'll be on the same side of the bracket. Wonder if they won't be and go to the finals. Are they going to make I mean, this that has feud? To be where it's going. Or, but are they going to blow up this feud this quick? Um, I the match that they have is not going to be their their last match. Let let me put that out there. Right now, Kenny Omega was uh 
interviewed and he talked really fast and he made a lot of references to Paige being a tag team wrestler and him being a singles wrestler and some other things. Yeah. Um, I want Kenny versus Paige in the finals and I want the Bucks to corner Kenny and to cost Hangman the match. So then, whenever <clears throat> Kenny beats Moxley, Paige has a gripe. Yeah. Tony Khan agrees, and then they have the match for the title. Because I'll tell you, I'll tell you what we're not going to do. We're not going to pretend that this storyline isn't the fucking raddest shit in AW because it is. Correct. So, call us shills, marks, whatever thing you want to throw at us. <laughs> it's the raddest shit going in AEW. Yep. NXT. So, NXT was a, a follow-up. The the follow-up to TakeOver 31. Um, we had the return of Ember Moon, who came out, started speaking, was interrupted by Io Shirai. Then Rhea Ripley came out. Then Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez came out. Ripley and Ember versus Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez in the main event. It was a very good match. Rhea and Ember had great chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, Ember Moon was out for 14 months. 14 months with an injury that could have ended her career. And she did not miss a fucking beat. No, not at all. I mean, she's just as good, if not better, than she was. Um, the pairing of her and Rhea Ripley is so awesome. They work so well together. It, I've never seen... And, and I'm not going to say I've never seen, because I'm sure on some other episode I probably said it before. But <laughs> it's rare to see two wrestlers that have never worked together become a tag team and work together this well. Uh, most recently, we saw it with Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, <clears throat> Ember is fantastic. Always has been. Yeah, people Probably were saying ahead. after TakeOver, what do you guys think of Ember being back on NXT? I said, first of all, that's a secondary thought. I'm just happy that Ember Moon can wrestle again. Yeah. Because honestly, last week I talked about Shotzi Blackheart and Chris Statlander being my favorite women. But Ember Moon goes ahead of them. Ember Moon is my favorite female wrestler. Um, but he says, well, I, I, forgot, I forgot that because she's been gone for so long. Yeah. And I didn't even know she was going to come back. So good on you, NXT. I'm really digging how the entire women's division and, is being and super uh, handled. And super good on you for keeping it under wraps. Yeah. For keeping it a surprise. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was going to be Bo Dallas. Yeah. Also, who returned was Tony Storm. But we haven't seen her in the ring yet. Yeah, she, she, she returned via video feed. Yep. Um, an unlikely pairing. Uh, we have Drake Maverick still trying to work out a friendship with Killian Dane. Yeah. Killian Dane isn't having it, but William Regal booked them in a match against Everrise. And... During this match... I like Everus. Yeah. And Wade Barrett even said they're a really good team. Mm -hmm. It's just... Right at the end, they lose. Something happens. Right. Um, I think they also are on 205 Live. Mm -hmm. um, but Drake and would randomly tag in or try to get Killian in. And Killian wasn't really happy with it until... One of the Ever Rise members gave him a cheap shot. Then he started getting really involved. They also called him a fat bozo. That's whenever he got real mad. <laughs> and he slammed Drake onto one of the members of Ever Rise for the win. Afterwards, Drake tried to celebrate. Uh, Killian punched him in the face. Walked out. Then he thought about it. Came back and carried Drake out on his shoulders. I also would like to note that the theme music was fucking hilarious. Yeah. It sounded like, it kind of reminded me of the theme song, The Gravity Falls. Yeah, kind of. Um, I really like this pairing because it gives Killian Dane something to do. And 
with all the great things that Drake Maverick did a few months ago with the cruiserweight title and all that stuff, uh, this really helps Dana a lot, and it gives both guys something to, to do and try to achieve, and it's a funny Funny pairing. Yeah. It's entertaining. To yeah, me. And, and Drake Maverick works really good when he's the small guy with a big guy. Because when he was with EC3, when they were in TNA, or Impact, when they were there, um, the stuff with Ethan Carter III and Rockstar Spud at the time was fantastic. Right. And I think we could see very similar stuff here. So I'm all for it. Yeah. Uh, we talked about a, a, a return. Now we must talk about a departure. Um, a very unfortunate one. Very. Um, so, TakeOver ended with Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly shaking hands, earning each other's respect, and the Arab boys coming down to, uh, to congratulate Kyle, but Adam wasn't there. And then Ridge Holland came out of nowhere with Ridge with uh, Cole on his shoulder, and he threw him down. Then he left. Uh, Ridge is also Irish, so we're all wondering if Ridge was hired by um, Finn oh, or done. if Ridge just did it because he wanted to get in Finn Balor's good graces. Whatever. Or if Ridge just did it because he loves kicking ass. <laughs> so earlier in the episode of NXT. They asked him about it, and he said, what I did to Adam Cole grew my wallet, or something like that. So he kind of, does that mean that it's propelling you to bigger matches? Does that mean that Finn Balor paid you up, blah, blah, blah? Well, unfortunately, we're not going to find out anytime soon. Yeah. Ridge Holland had a match with Danny Burch. Uh... He massacred Danny Birch after the match. Oni Lorcan came to save Danny Birch. Uh, he did a suicide dive to the outside once, where Ridge Holland kept, caught him well. And then he went to do another one later on in the brawl. And my God, you can just see the man's ankle snap. And as soon as it happened, he you could. He cried out in pain. The referees jumped over him, and the camera cut away. Um, after NXT came back from commercial break, Holland was on a stretcher with a boot around his leg, and he gave the thumbs-up sign, as they usually do in sports. He came from rugby, so I assume that's why he did that. Um, he... I didn't know he came from rugby, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. The way he wrestles <laughs> yeah. and headbutts and shit. Um, and murders. WWE announced Holland dislocated and broke his ankle, as well as dislocated and ruptured his patellar tendon. Yeah. He had surgery right away, but he might need more, and there's no timetable for him to come back. I read somewhere another article that said six months, but we don't know. So this... This guy that they wanted to make a star right away, unfortunately, got a bad injury. Um, Real bad. And I'm I'm bummed, man. I am too. Um, and it's it's not the first time this has happened. It it it's awful when this was essentially a re debut for Rich Holland, right? And for it to be cut short. In such a horrendous way. And it was such a freak accident. Because they did the spot right before. You know? It was yeah. so weird. It was so weird. Because and he caught him fine. I, I can't imagine how Oni Lorcan feels. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. I really can't. I mean... We had a sort of similar situation with... Uh, well, when Walking Wild was an impact is DJZ... Very similar situation with him and Jesse Sorensen. Oh, yeah. When he landed on him and broke his neck. Um, you feel awful when that happens. Right. I mean, DJ Z talked about second-guessing his career in, in its entirety. Owen Hart felt so bad for breaking Steve Austin's neck 
that he never called him while he was out. Austin and, got mad because he never called him. Yeah. Didn't understand why and hated Owen for years. Owen, being a heart, one, felt that he did his family wrong, and two, he was he felt terrible for Steve. And he never did the power driver again. So, yeah. Accidents happen. I mean, you can call this fake as much as you want, but it's fucking not. It's not. So, hope Armbar Audio wishes Bridge Holland a speedy recovery. Hopefully he can have a wrestling career. And, Oni, don't don't blame yourself. Right. So our last subject of the evening started last night on SmackDown. The WWE Draft. It's time to show things up again. Now, John, <laughs> we were talking about the draft last week, and you brought up an amazing, logical point. When should the WWE draft happen, John? Okay, before I said, now keep in mind, the draft as an idea is fine. It's totally fine. I don't understand why they do it at the most random, stupid ass times. It's random, completely random. It's at a different time every year. It should be at the same time every year. And it should be the Raw after WrestleMania should be the draft. That's what the episode should be in its entirety. Just the draft. No starting on SmackDown and continuing, continuing it on Raw. It should be that three-hour segment. That three hours on Monday should be the draft after WrestleMania. And the two people who get chosen should wrestle each other. Yeah. That's that's how it goes. Because WrestleMania is the culmination of all the storylines. Or it's so, supposed to be. So what a great way to start the year. Um... So anyway, getting into the actual draft, round number one saw Drew McIntyre, the WWE Champion, stay on Raw. We got the Universal Champion, Roman Reigns, staying on SmackDown. The Raw Women's Champion, Asuka, staying on Raw. The Hurt Business, staying on Raw. And Seth Rollins, the Monday Night Messiah, is bringing the greater good to Friday nights. <laughs> the only person to change in the first round was Seth Rollins. Yeah. And I thought, great. Hopefully, the Mysterios stay on Raw because I don't want to watch or hear about any more of this shit storyline. They did an interview with Seth Rollins. He said he wanted to wrestle Big E. He was impressed with Big E's singles work. He put over somebody else, and then he then he said was asked about Matt Riddle, and he said, "I don't care. He could go to Raw for all I care. I never want to wrestle that guy." Hmm. Why would Seth Rollins say that? Weird. Super weird. I don't know why would he say that. You think he's talking about? the stuff i mean probably but he has no reason to i mean didn't he like leak nude photos of himself or some shit something like that fuck it i don't care right um i don't really care about some romans <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i'm not gonna say anything about matt riddle until he's proven guilty so or any innocent. whatever no i won't say anything bad unless he's guilty oh right 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 so, the second round of the draft happened. Kicking it off, AJ Styles is going to Raw. That's who Seth talked about. He was talking yeah. about wrestling AJ again. Uh, but we won't see that because AJ is now going to Raw. Why? Because Paul Hammond's on SmackDown. Bingo! Mm -hmm. We got Sasha Banks staying on SmackDown. We got Naomi moving to Raw. 
Who cares? We got well, Bianca. Who cares? Naomi's fine. Yeah, but uh, yeah. who cares? Bianca Belair is going to SmackDown. She's super happy about it. She's happy that she, she's going to be on the same roster with Sasha Banks. And the way yeah. that SmackDown is handled, yeah, it's it's newer stars. This is where I'm Bianca ready. is going to shine. We've all been complaining about how she's been treated on Raw. This is where she's going to shine. Definitely. And we got the female tag team champions, Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax, on Raw. Okay. Round three. First one, to me, John, is very disappointing. Ricochet stays on Raw. Yeah. If there's anybody they could use a move, it's Ricochet. Agreed. I, I don't get it. Jey Uso, who is involved in a storyline with his cousin Roman Reigns on SmackDown, is staying on SmackDown. Hey, there you go. They got one. Mandy Rose, who's already moved to Raw. We heard about it a long time ago. Is moving to Raw. Oh, wow. They had to make a whole thing for that. The Miz and John Morrison are going from SmackDown to Raw. That one I'm okay with. That makes a lot of sense. That's interesting. They're more entertainers. Yeah. And then, John, what I said earlier about Seth Rollins and the oh, shit storyline. Tim, what happened to you, boy? The Tell Mysterios got drafted to SmackDown. Oh, good. So, the sh I watch SmackDown. I don't watch Raw. I read about it if I find something that it's topical or something good. I watch it. Watch that part. Why are you invading the good show with the shit storyline? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, man. But if I'm being honest, I am excited. I'm excited more so for Dominic than I am for Ray and Seth Rollins. Because I want to see Dominic Mysterio fight everybody. He's so damn good. I'm so proud of him. I watched this kid grow up. We all did. Uh, he's gonna make. But Papa how long? Eddie. How long is he, are you gonna have to wait for that? What do you mean? He's been wrestling Seth Rollins since SummerSlam, and it's still going. No, he had the match with Buddy Murphy, and that was it. <laughs> was I don't think that's it. I don't think the Murphy no. uh, Rey Mysterio daughter's storyline's over. No, I don't think so either. Anyway, I wish it was, because it's fucking creepy. Right. Uh, <sighs> round four saw Angel Garza stay on Raw. Otis stay on SmackDown. So he's not going to be with Mandy. Dana Brooke on Raw. Yay. I thought Otis was going to Raw. No. And oh. then, uh, I thought he to did. preface the next, the last two, um... Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston came back uh, yeah. on SmackDown, uh, along with Lars Xavier. Sullivan, and who gives a shit about him, Yeah, who's obviously on Raw now for mm -hmm. some reason, but he mm -hmm. debuted on SmackDown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Kofi and Xavier come back. Xavier looks fucking great. Oh, I was so happy. Stephanie McMahon makes an impromptu tag team title match. With Kofi and Xavier against Shinsuke and Cesaro. And the New Day win the titles again. Oh, so they're definitely staying on SmackDown, right? Nope. Oh. Big E stays on SmackDown. Oh. But Kofi and Xavier Woods are on Raw. So. Oh, and they're the what? They're the SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Oh, right. Yeah. The Raw Tag Team Champions are the Street Profits. Oh, that's crazy. And, and and they're and they're going to SmackDown? We don't know that yet. Oh, okay. A lot of people are saying that a possible unification and a uh, uh, a passing of the torch will happen. No, I I I, I some I people are saying the new day is broken up because of this. I don't want to sound negative, but that sounds really fucking stupid. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> Oh, you do? Yes. I thought we were both being sarcastic assholes. No. Because <laughs> uh, I am. <laughs> I like it because 
That means they're going full yeah. on with Big yeah, E as that, singles competitor. That part I like. That part I like. I don't believe the New Day is broken up. The guys no. have a podcast. They're yeah. not just going to not be to not do that anymore. Right. Um, and who says, they have, who says they have to break up? No. I saw some commentary online that said that Big E didn't look happy whenever Kofi and Xavier came back. When it was announced that that they is, were being that, moved, yeah, yeah. Big E looked pretty distraught about it. Yeah. Um, so, I think that's bullshit. Um, next week... It's going to make the reunion party at Survivor Series awesome. Next week, um, on SmackDown, the New Day will have a six-man match against who gives a shit. <laughs> the real story here is this going to be the last time you see the three of them wrestle in the same ring. I, I, and I think it's going to be a really nice moment. I hope so. At the end. They can't turn Big E on them. No. Because he's been doing so good against Sheamus and as a face. And they definitely can't have them lose their last match together. Right. <laughs> like, please. <sighs> For the love of God, don't. So, I'd say the beginning of the draft... Good for Big E. Yeah. Good for Bianca Belair. How do you feel about Rollins and Reigns being on the same show? Uh, I I hadn't really even considered Roman Reigns being involved with Seth Rollins. Uh, I'm looking forward to some fresh matchups for Seth Rollins that I hope I get. I hope that they don't just automatically put him against Roman. And, uh... I don't. I don't, I don't want to see them interact at all no. because Roman, Roman's character is doing great, and Rollins is currently a heel still. So yeah. I don't. I don't need them to fuck up Roman Reigns right now. Exactly. So please don't fuck up Roman Reigns right, right now. Um, Hell in a Cell looks like it's going to be Bailey versus Sasha, and the first ever Hell in a Cell I Quit match. With Jey Uso and Roman Reigns, uh, I'm hoping for lots of weapons and lots of uh, lots of brutality. Right. So, with that, wherever you are in the world, whether it's morning, noon, or night, you have a great one and peace and love to all, to of, all you. of you. Bang. <laughs>